Hi everyone, I just wanted to jump on and make a quick reaction uh, video to an excellent film that I've just seen. It was on Amazon Prime, it's called The Mauritanian and uh, features Taha Rahim as a detainee in Guantanamo Bay. His char character is called Muhammadu uh, Salahi. It's based on a true story of this man being detained at Guantanamo Bay without charges for I think something like 15, 16, 17 years. Uh, it's a, an incredibly uh, incredible film, brilliantly acted and raises some real sort of gut-wrenching, triggering issues. Now, if you watch any other of my other reaction videos, you'll have seen one on the Netflix series, When They See Us. You'll have seen a few on the Michael Jackson stories. Uh, one which is barely watched at all is on the film um, called Just Mercy, starring Jamie Foxx. That was an excellent film this year. And I almost wonder with, um, with the Michael Jackson videos, they're quite popular because it's a popular subject. With this uh, review and reaction to the Mauritanian, I, I'm not sure how popular it is. It may only get like, a handful of views, but I still feel I had to make it because it raises such important issues about the system um, about the injustices that go on the, in the world and how things are not always as, 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 we, as they seem. Now, as we grew, grew up, now obviously I'm, I'm English, I'm from the UK, I'm not an American, I'm not, I'm not born there, not raised in the education system, but we very much in the UK get raised believing that the UK are the good guys, the Americans are the good guys, and the bad guys are out there in the world. You know, you've got the Russians, you've got the Iraqis, the Middle Easterns, and of course, more and more now, you've got the Chinese. And these are the bad guys. These are the terrorists. They're the people you've got to be careful of. They're the people you need to fear because deep down, they want to take over the world. They want to bomb our towns and cities, kill our people etc etc the story goes on and the narrative goes on but the more you grow up and the more you start to listen to different sources and if you are um, open to these sources to, and willing to dig a little deeper than just what you're told the way the world works you start to find a very different story you fight to start to find there are a lot of gray areas rather than black and white and this movie highlights just how many gray areas there are. You see, in fact, who are portrayed as usually portrayed as the good guys, the Americans, you get to see how corrupt they are. You get to see how they don't stand up for justice and you get to see how they torture innocent people, how they don't uh, don't have any charges and how they use can use individuals for scapegoats. So after 9-11 happened, the Americans were, their pride was completely damaged and in tatters. They feel that they are, well, they are in militaristic terms, the most powerful nation on the earth. And how could a terrorist attack happen to them? How could that loss of life have occurred on their own soil? And someone had to pay. Didn't really matter who, and that's what you discover in this film. Didn't matter who, as long as they had an Arabic sounding name, that was good enough for the Americans. So they launched their bullshit war in Afghanistan. They launched their bullshit war in um, Iraq. And by the way, I'm not defending uh, the Taliban in any way whatsoever. If you read a book called The Kite Runner, you can find out what disgusting individuals they are as well. So almost in a way, it's, it was probably a good thing that the Americans invaded and wiped some of them out, although they caused more problems than the Taliban is now on the rise again, but that's maybe subject for another video. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that the Americans, are, America is portrayed as these as the good guys, the the, the you know the land of freedom essentially, uh, where people aren't tortured and there's a rule of law. And you get to discover through this film how that simply isn't the case. The uh, Tahir Rahim's uh, character gets abducted from his home in. Mauritania, forgive me if I say that incorrectly, I barely think I'd heard of the country up until watching this film. It's on, it's in West Africa. Basically, he had gets abducted because he has very loose connections with a man who is involved with the Taliban. He gets taken to Guantanamo Bay where he's de uh, detained without trial. Uh, they have no evidence on him apart from these very uh, flimsy, loose connections. So 
The American forces, the interrogators, go about torturing him, go about forcing a confession out of him, telling him that his mother is going to be sent to Guantanamo Bay as well and raped by the, um, I think it was the inmates or the guards, I can't remember. Anyway, after all of this physical and psychological torture, he finally signs a confession. He's going to trial. Um, this is around, I think he gets captured around 2002. He's going to trial around 2006, 2007. It runs through into 2008, 2009. Fortunately, he has a good lawyer in the form of Jodie Foster. And the prosecution's lawyer, who is played by Benedict Cumberbatch, as the case develops, becomes more and more suspicious of the evidence against him and starts to realize that it's a setup. It's a bullshit case, basically. And despite having won the case, I think in 2010, he you see him receive a document from the, um, the courts, I assume, saying that he won the case, he's a free man. He's not a free man because in steps Obama and his administration and they detain um, Muhammadu for even longer. A further six or six years, I think, he got out in 2016, six years before he finally gets out. And I mean, that speaks volumes about Obama. We always get told, especially with Trump having been in for the last four years, that B Obama was the big hero. He was the savior. Well, really, he wasn't at all. He was just another president like the rest of them, probably no better than Donald Trump. And I'm not a Donald Trump fan in saying that. I just want to make it clear that Obama is not this hero that he's portrayed as, that the... Um, that so many people, for some reason, I don't know why, want to hold him up as this great savior. Well, he wasn't. It was under his administration that this innocent man was refused uh, uh, to allow to be free. So I just want to finish this uh, reaction and review off by saying something. I listen to a lot of American podcasts. I watch a lot of American TV. And something I've noticed is that if you say in America that you're a veteran, you've been involved in the armed forces in some way, quite a common reaction from another person is, thank you for your service. And it's quite, quite often I hear that. We don't have that in the UK. We don't say thank you for your service when we find out somebody's been in the armed forces. And there may well be some heroes, genuine heroes in the US military, in the US armed forces. And I don't deny that. But there is a lot of scumbags as well. So if you're saying thank you for your service, you could be thanking one of these sons of bitches who tortured innocent men in Guantan Guantanamo Bay. Or if you want to watch something else about some of the crimes the US uh, military has been up to, watch this documentary on YouTube called, I think it's called The Coming War on China. And you see how appallingly the Americans have behaved in the Marshall Islands which are east of Japan and how they've tried to set up, well, they have set up nuclear bases, nuclear um, armed bases there with nuclear warheads and the horrible way they've treated some of the natives of those islands and the uh, nuclear bombs they let off there, I think in the 50s and 60s. And so you're saying, you're saying thank you for your service. You could be thanking one of these complete murderers so I would think twice if I was an American about saying thank you for your service to somebody who's a veteran in the armed forces because you just don't know who you're thanking. They may be a hero, they may be a murderer. So uh, that's one final point I wanted to make. Anyway, I highly recommend you watch this. This is really um, eye-opening. It's really triggering as well. Maybe you can tell and that's why I try to record these reactions straight after I've seen them because the emotions are raw. You um, get to see how horrible the system is that we've created. Finally, in the credits, when the end of the film uh, is rolling and you see the, the writing at the end and some of the credits, they say that I think around 779 people have been detained in Guantanamo Bay. And I think it was only like, some, like something like eight of them have been charged and of those eight, three have had their um, charges uh, challenged, basically. So basically, it's a huge detention center for innocent people. 
And this is on American soil. This is under the American government, the supposed land of the free. So that just that statistic at the at the end is such an eye opener. Why does this place still exist? Why are they still doing it? Partly because of U.S. being, uh, I would guess, being unable to say that they're wrong, being unable to admit the horrible crimes that they've committed. And he also mentions in the credit that the credits that the CIA has never apologized about this or come forwards about this. And I wanted to mention, since we're on the subject of terrorism, I believe that the CIA is and was and has been the biggest terrorist organization, the most dangerous terrorist organization uh, in the world, far more dangerous than Al Qaeda. And we used to get so much in the media here during the 2000s about terrorism, about Al Qaeda, how horrible they were, how, um, you know, there was a plot to blow up stations or airports every other week in the UK. One did happen, and obviously these are very serious attacks, so I don't want to make light of that. But what I do want to stress is there is, uh, I think there's a misconception going around about who the real terrorists are or who the most dangerous terrorists are. Because if you're going to, going to make a list, I think you would probably put the CIA at the top of it. Anyway, that's my reaction video for now. I hope you have found it interesting. I hope you watch the film. It's excellent. And I'll see you in the next video.